Hi, everyone. The videos in this set that I'm uploading are from an online Survey of Astronomy course that I taught in the fall of 2022. I figured there might be some people out there who could get some utility from these recorded sessions, but I did want to make a few quick comments first. Uh, these sessions are from a general intro to astronomy course that's usually taken by non-science majors. With that being the case, many of the topics that we go through are necessarily simplified, but if you're so inclined, I encourage people to post comments and have discussion on some of the many details that I've glossed over in these sessions. I have tried to edit out specific references to tests and assignments. Again, this is from a course that I was teaching. It's likely that some of those references are still in there, so my apologies in advance if I talk about things like tests and assignments. I will try to edit those out. Lastly, with new information coming to us every day from the James Webb Space Telescope and a variety of other observatories, our understanding of many different kinds of astrophysical systems are changing and will continue to change over the coming years. But the fact that new data forces us to revise our ideas is true of any area of science. So this is a feature, not a bug. Again, I encourage anyone to discuss what ideas that are presented in here are already out of date. Some of the new information that's constantly coming out. If you have ideas for topics that you want me to talk about in more detail, I'm happy to get more of those recommendations. So all that being said, Thank you for watching, and here's the start to my intro to astronomy sessions. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this first recording of the Astro 1000 course, Survey of Astronomy. My name is Michael Koop. I'm the instructor for this course. And before we get into any of the course details, I really want to emphasize right off the bat that my goal is to help all of you succeed in this course. I know we've got people in this course from lots of different math backgrounds, lots of different science backgrounds. Whatever your background and previous experience in studying astronomy is, I want everyone to be able to succeed in the course. So a couple other things about this course. First, uh, will there be math in this class? Uh, yes, there, there is going to be math. For example, uh, one of the equations that we're going to be looking at later is the apparent brightness equation. Apparent brightness, basically how bright an object appears to be to your eye, is equal to the luminosity, basically how much light energy is this thing giving off, divided by four pi times the distance to that source squared. So let me just kind of draw this out as a quick example. So let's say I have some light source, it's giving off some light. And let's say I'm over here. You can tell the amazing artistic abilities that I have. And there's a certain distance between you and the source of light. Um, the luminosity is just how much light energy overall is being given off. And the apparent brightness is basically how bright does it look to you. So if you're given an equation like this, if I give you two of um, apparent brightness, luminosity, and distance, if I give you two of those, you should be able to calculate the third. So if I give you the luminosity of the source, how much light energy it's giving off, and the distance, you should be able to find the apparent brightness. Or if you have the apparent brightness and you have the distance, you should be able to kind of rearrange this and solve for luminosity these kinds of mathematical rearrangements. One thing that I find helps a lot when trying to understand a new equation is trying to look at the form of the equation and identify what each of the variables physically corresponds to and try to tie that to some sort of actual physical system, some sort of um, practical example. So for example, going back to this equation of apparent brightness equals luminosity over four pi times the distance squared. Well, let's say I have this original system, some light source, and it looks to be a, a certain brightness to my eye. Well, if I took a similar system and said, now this thing is going to have a ridiculously high luminosity. So we have a large luminosity, 
And let's say we're the same distance away. So this distance is exactly the same as what we had before. What do you think should happen to the apparent brightness? If I increase the luminosity, but I'm, I'm increase the overall light energy that this source is giving off, but I'm the same distance away from it. What should happen to the apparent brightness? Should it go up or go down? Now, this is the part in the video where if I ask a question like this, I recommend you pause it and try to answer it before I uh, give the solution. But when you do that, if I increase this luminosity, I'm increasing the numerator, the top of a fraction. And when I do that, I increase the value of the fraction overall. So if I increase this luminosity while keeping the distance the same, well, the apparent brightness should go up. It's like saying, if I had a 40 watt light bulb and I was looking at it, it looks, uh, it looks like it has a certain brightness to my eye. If I then uh, switch that 40 watt light bulb for a 100 watt light bulb, well, that's gonna appear a lot brighter to my eye. Another variation that we could make is let's say I have the original light source. So the luminosity is the same. Okay. However, in this case, I move much further away. I increase the distance. So I'm standing over here. We've got the same light source that we had before, but I am observing it from farther away. It's at a greater distance. What should happen to the apparent brightness of the source in that case? So we've got the same luminosity, but I increase the distance. What should happen to the apparent brightness? Well, if you think of taking that light bulb and just moving it further away, well, it won't be as bright to my eye. If I increase this distance, that distance is in the denominator of the equation. And if I increase the denominator of a fraction, if I go from, let's say, 1 over 2, 1 half, to 1 over 100, 1 one hundredth, um, if I increase that denominator, it makes the fraction much smaller. So if I'm looking at a greater distance, according to this equation, if I increase the distance, well, I'm making the denominator of that fraction larger, which makes the fraction overall smaller. So looking at this as an equation, that might be kind of hard to identify what the equation is telling us about this kind of physical system. That's why I recommend you think of a particular kind of system that this equation would apply to, say, looking at a light bulb. If I take that light bulb and hold it right up to my eye, so I make the distance very, very small, well, if I hold that right up to my eye, it will appear very, very bright to my eye. And again, that's another thing that this equation says. If I make this distance smaller, if I make the bottom of this fraction smaller, then the value of that fraction increases. You get a greater apparent brightness. This is going to be a kind of method that I recommend a lot when we're going through uh, calculus. A couple other things to mention. Um, Throughout the course, we're going to be looking at a lot of different kinds of graphs. Being able to read and interpret those graphs is going to be very, very important. For example, this is a graph um, that we're going to be looking at quite a bit that relates basically the color of a star, and we'll talk about how that's particularly measured, to their luminosity, basically how bright are they. And it turns out that there are some very distinct patterns of what types of stars have what luminosities and what uh, surface colors to that. So instead of all these stars, and each dot on here represents one star, we're going to be looking at this graph in a lot more detail about halfway through the course. But this shows us that are, there are some patterns in this data that tell us a lot about how stars form, about how stars evolve, stellar life cycles. Um, again, we're going to be using that in a lot more detail later. But let's think about this. Can this be used? Can we use some of this data with the previous equation? Because when we're looking at a star, we might not automatically know 
how luminous that star is, just how much light energy that star is giving off. But if we can measure the color of that star, we can see by this pattern that certain stars of certain colors will have certain luminosities. So if we can use that information to get the luminosity, and I can look at the star and say, this is how bright the star appears to be. If I know the luminosity and I know the apparent brightness, well, maybe I can use that equation from before to figure out how far away that star is. This is going to be one of the methods that, again, we'll go into more detail later. This is going to be one of the methods that we use for measuring cosmic distances. A couple last things before I end off this video. Um, what are the goals of this course? We're going to be studying the various physical systems that we see in the cosmos. We're going to be trying to look at how do we actually gather data and gather evidence and use the scientific method to try to inform our understanding of all of these different kinds of celestial objects. When I'm going through these sessions, I know this is live, so you can't just you know raise your hand and I can't just immediately answer questions. But one of the things that I'm going to try to do a lot with the discussion boards is if I make some claim that you think I can't back up, if you're asking, well, how do you know that that's actually true? Well, I want you to call BS on me. We're going to be using some of the discussion questions to say, what claims have I made and how can I try to back up those claims? What actual evidence do I have to back up those claims? So we're going to be talking a lot about the scientific method and seeing how that can be applied to increase our understanding of all these different kinds of objects. We're going to learn how to evaluate and test scientific hypotheses. We're going to learn about the basic physical laws that seem to govern the universe, laws like uh, conservation of energy, uh, laws of gravity, laws of um, how light interacts with matter, and we're going to apply those laws both qualitatively and quantitatively to understand the properties of different systems, to try to come up with models to predict how those systems will evolve, um, these are some of the goals that we're going to be looking at uh, throughout the course. And eventually, we're going to be getting to the point where we're going to be able to take these key concepts and apply them to new novel situations and see how, again, the scientific method can allow us to make new predictions of new kinds of phenomenon, um, practicing problem-solving strategies, uh, all of these sorts of uh, properties. That's hopefully where we're going to get in this course. For the course schedule, uh, the way I kind of organize this, the course is breaking it up into three main parts um, with one unit test for each of those. Unit one is going to be physical laws in everyday astronomy, so some backyard astronomy, looking at some of the laws of gravity, what we can predict about celestial motions in our own solar system. We're going to spend a couple of classes looking at the properties of light. Uh, so that's going to be unit one. Unit two is going to be focused on stars, looking at our own sun and then other stars, looking at their properties, life cycles, you know, what happens when a star runs out of fuel, what are the fuels for different stars, things like that. And in unit three, we're going to look at galaxies and the universe, kind of zooming out even more, looking at uh, galaxies, the large scale structure of galaxies, and eventually getting to, into topics um, like things related to the Big Bang, what's our evidence for it, what are some of the open questions in astronomy, um, that's going to be for you and three. So that's kind of the introduction, and we'll call that good for this recording, and I look forward to working with you all this term.